good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the Black Nostradamus with my wife, the Kingdom Strategist, just coming to you with a brief uh, encouragement. Just wanted to encourage someone on this afternoon. Just want to say, hope you guys enjoying your day like we are uh, this wonderful sunny afternoon out here in sunny Orlando, Florida. It is beautiful. It is beautiful in paradise. That's what uh, I, as well as a lot of other people call uh, Florida, call it paradise. And uh, definitely enjoying the weather. Just uh, actually cruising right now, headed somewhere to take care of some business. But I wanted to just come on here real briefly to say challenge to become a challenger. <clears throat> Challenged to become a challenger. And what I mean by that is um, you should want someone in your life to be able to challenge you so that you can become a challenger, so that you can become a challenger amongst all the other challengers in this life. You should want to be the number one, the top challenger, the top contender that God has chosen for you in your lane. Did you hear what I said? And you could go ahead and share this. I'm not going to be before you long, but I just wanted to encourage someone today. <clears throat> you should want someone to challenge you to become the best challenger in the world. Uh, and, and what I've come to find out is there's uh, two types of people. There's a type of people that are challengers, and then there's the type of people that are are defeated. They're conquered. But the Bible tells us that uh, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So with that being said, you should have the mentality that it's okay for someone to challenge me in regards to helping push me to my destiny. A lot, a lot of the problem that we have in society is, especially when it comes to males, and particularly African-American men, <clears throat> young men don't have fathers. And what a father would do is challenge you to come up. And that's why a lot of males, they grow up with these stigmas. They grow up with these mentalities. They grow up with these uh, uh, shortcomings and flaws. And, and, and their mental state is not fully developed in, re in relationships to the biblical pattern, in relationships to what God has set for for their life because they didn't have a father in their life to challenge them. They didn't have a father to say, you know what, you can do better than what you're doing. You can do better than what you're doing. You can go further than where you are. You can come up. You know, okay, you got you got a B. You got a B on your report card. No, you can do better than that. You can get an A. I'm a, I'm not I'm gonna celebrate that B that you got, but I'm also gonna challenge you to come higher and get that A. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> Oh, yeah, you ran you ran a mile. You ran a mile in five minutes. That's good. But you could do better than that. You're better than that. I challenge you to run a mile in three minutes. You can do it. Know why? Because I see the potential inside of you. I'm not going to patty cake you. I'm not going to baby you. I'm not going to sit up there and say that I'm happy with where you are because I'm your father. I'm your mentor or I'm your apostle. Or I'm your leader. And I want to challenge you to become the greatest challenger in the world. And, and you got to understand that a lot of people, especially when it comes, I use that as an example because it's very rampant in African-American communities. A lot of young males did not have a father to challenge them. So when you get someone in your life that's an elder, that's a leader, that's a covering, that's a mentor, and they begin to challenge you, you have to look past your emotions because emotions can get us in trouble. We're not called to follow our emotions. We're called to follow God by faith. Did you hear what I said? We're not called to follow. Please share this. We're not called to fo follow our emotions, but we're ca called to follow God by faith. And a lot of times we can get in our emotions, which is our flesh. And when someone tries to challenge us, we begin to think that because we're not looking through the lens of discernment, we begin to think that someone is condemning us. There's a difference from conviction versus con condemnation. When you are convicted, more than likely, it is because you know deep and down inside, you know deep down inside that it's something that you need to come up to. You need to come up to a higher standard and a higher bar. But a, a lot of times when you have immature mindsets or immature mentalities, what can take place is you will begin to say, you know what, they're not challenging me, they're condemning me. Nine times out of ten, I heard uh, a spiritual daughter of mine, she made a post, Prophetess Kalinta, I give a shout out to her. She said, when you go to church on, on Sunday or even midweek Bible study, and when you go to church, period, and, and that man or that woman of God seems like they're preaching to you or they're preaching about you, then nine times out of ten, they are. 
is because the Holy Spirit is using them to bring you higher. But because we have a mentality of immaturity or a mentality that has not been cultivated or developed, we begin to think people want to beat us down for the sake of beating us down. But you have to look at it as not just a beat down for the sake of being beat down. It is a, a cultivation that's taking place. It is a challenging that's taking place to push you past where you are. Your friends ain't going to tell you. You could wear that, that, that different color in your hair or that crazy looking wig and your friend going to say, if nine times out of ten, unless they're a real friend, they're going to say it look okay but it probably don't look okay it probably look crazy you probably wearing a crazy outfit that looks crazy or you probably putting on something that doesn't match your skin tone and people won't tell you the truth that's not a real friend that's not a person that challenges you to come up higher it's time out for that it's time to move past the, the immature mentality, the baby mentality. Oh, they're talking about me. Oh, they're hurting me. No, nine times out of 10, usually when there's a leader that's placed or assigned to your life and they begin to challenge you, it's not because they want to hurt you, but it is because they want to propel you. They want to push you into your destiny. They see greater in you. And if nobody else will tell you, then who will? If nobody else would, would, would sit there and tell you that you're doing wrong, then who will? If nobody else would sit there and tell you that you can do better, then who will? If nobody can tell you that you can go further than where you are, then who will? If nobody ever told you that you don't got to be on food stamps all, all your life, then who will? If nobody ever told you that you don't, you don't have to live paycheck to paycheck, then who will? If nobody ever told you you can go back to school and get your education, then who will? If nobody ever told you you can walk in a boss status and be a boss, but the world is telling you that you can't be a boss, not even the world, the church is telling you that you can't be a boss, the church is telling you that you got to be a peasant, then who will? Real leaders that come into your life to push you accordingly are there to challenge you. I want somebody to challenge me to come up higher. I don't know about you, but I want somebody to challenge me to come up higher. I want somebody that has been assigned to my life to tell me that I can do better than the current situation that I'm in. Because if, the, if I didn't have somebody to tell me or challenge me to push me to become a strong leader, then I wouldn't be Apostle Andrew who I am today. Me and my wife, we challenge one another. I don't believe in all of that. Okay, <clears throat> the man is the male dictatorship and everything he say goes. Yes, there's an order even in the house because I am the priest of my home. But what I teach my sons is even though you're the priest of your home, you should listen to your Sarah. Even though you're the priest of your home, you should listen to what your Sarah is saying. I'm using that uh, symbolic because it was Abraham and Sarah. Uh, uh, God told Abraham, he said, listen to the woman, listen to Sarah in one, in, in, in one instance. So a lot of times, men, if we can learn from our wife, we can learn from our spouses, we can learn from a woman if we would just humble down. Being humble and listening to your Sarah don't make you less of a man. Actually, that make you more of a man because you're wise. I said that to say, me and my wife... Iron, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Me and my wife, we sharpen each other iron. I'm not the dictator. Just because I'm the priest of the home, just because I'm I'm a person that, uh, I, I mean, I'm a man and I'm a person that's in that position given by God, don't mean that I'm not going to listen to my wife. She sharpens me. If she wasn't there to push me, I don't know where I would be. If I wasn't there to push her, I don't know where, where she would, she don't know where she would be. We sharpen one another. So it's not just my position to be the one that barks or the one that gives the orders, but it is my position to receive as well. Some of y'all don't know how to receive. Not only do you don't know how to receive uh, 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 money, because some of y'all don't even know how to receive gifts and money. You think that's humble, not receiving? I have to learn. God, the Holy Spirit began to deal with me and said, that's not humble, not learning how to receive, because I could send somebody with your blessing, and because you don't want to receive it, you thinking you're walking in humility, but really you're walking in rejection. You reject what I'm giving you. Some of y'all don't know how to receive tangible things such as gifts, such as money, because you believe it's humble because of what tradition and religion has taught you. But that's not humble. In order to move into greatness, you must first learn how to receive. Some of y'all don't know how to receive tangible things, but then some of y'all also don't know how to receive instructions. You don't know how to receive instructions. 
You don't know how to receive from the people that want to push you into greater. You have to move past the flesh, move past that mentality, move past that baby stuff and move into the meat of God's word. Some things are going to be hefty. Some things you're going to need a steak knife to cut in half and cut that word up. Some things you're going to have to chew on a little bit longer until you break it into pieces and digest it just the way it needs to be in order for it to go down and flow correctly. Corrected, in a corrected manner. Some things are going to be meaty, but if you learn to receive it, then your, di- your spiritual digestive system will begin to prosper. So it's time out for that. Oh, they're talking about me. You need somebody to challenge you. You didn't have a daddy growing up to challenge you. Some of us didn't have mamas growing up to challenge us. Some of us didn't have teachers. Some of us didn't have elders. Some of us didn't have coverings. Some of us didn't have prophets. Some of us didn't have apostles to challenge us to become greater. You better thank God that somebody is, God has sent somebody assigned to your life to challenge you. You better thank God for that. My wife, she will, iron sharp as iron as I told you. My wife challenged me to get my education. She said, you can do it. You sitting up there feeling sorry for yourself? No, you are a wise man. You are a strong man. You smart. You knowledgeable. You just don't know it yet. You can go back to school. Let's get it. Let's get it done today. The very same day that we begin to talk about it, I begin to whine and complain and say, oh, I always wanted to go back to school. My wife, a strong woman, she sat up there and pushed me. She said, you can do it, Andrew. And right now today, I got my education in multiple degrees, giving God all the glory, but giving honor to my wife. She challenged me. She pushed me. I had elders in the body of Christ that challenged me. You can fast longer. You can pray harder. You can study more. They challenged me. They didn't baby me. Now listen to me. Don't get me wrong. There are some times where you're going to need some people to say it's okay and patty cake you and comfort you. Yes, you are. That is what the Holy Spirit is there for first and foremost. So sometimes you're going to need those things. But then there's going to be other times in your life where you're going to need someone to push you. You, someone to tell you what you're doing is wrong. Someone to tell you that, no, you don't need to go left, but you need to go right. Because if you would have went left, you probably would have lost your life. Did you hear what I said? Challenged to become a challenger. Teach it. Challenge to become a challenger, to become one of the greatest challengers in the world. Yes. Do you not know if the Holy Spirit or God was not pushing David, he would have not stood up and been strong to to challenge the giant, Goliath. Some of you all are scared. Some of you all feel like you're in a dark place. Some of you all feel like you're in a dark space and you got nowhere to go and you're facing a Goliath in your life. But there's no one there to push you to become a challenger. Well, I want to encourage you today that you're challenged not to become a wimp, but you're challenged to become a challenger. And one of the greatest challengers in the world, one of the greatest challenges in the earth, his name is Jesus Christ. And he has called you to walk in his footsteps. You're facing a David. You're facing a Goliath. You're facing a Goliath and that Goliath look like it looks very intimidating. It looks very intimidating. It looks like he's going to kill you. It looks like he's going to destroy everything in your life because he's bigger. He's taller. He looks more stronger than you. But I want to encourage you. I want to push you to let you know, even though that Goliath looks big, even though that Goliath looks intimidating, even though that Goliath looks like it can destroy you, you have the greatest challenger in the world on your side, and his name is Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. It's time out for that, people of God. It's time out for feeling sorry for yourself. It's a time to weep. And then it's a time to wipe those tears and begin to walk boldly in the confidence of the Lord. Mm. It's time out for that. You worried about somebody talking about you. Ain't nobody talking about you. People are trying to push you into your destiny, push you into greatness. But that same warped mentality will keep you stagnant and will keep you stuck even in 2018, even in 2019, 2020, 2021. It'll be 2030 and you still stuck because you thinking that the help that God sent you was there to prevent you. Did you hear what I said? You're thinking that the help that God sent you was there to prevent you.
but it was not there to prevent you. It was not there to prevent you from moving forward, but it was there to challenge you to become a great challenger. Yes. I love you guys very much. I just wanted to encourage you all. Stop thinking that your leaders or whoever God assigns you to your prophet is there to destroy you. You have to move past the flesh and begin to move in a, a, a mature mentality that they're challenging me because nobody else will. They're challenging me and pushing me, propelling me into my destiny because no one else will. I'm thankful for the prophet that God has assigned to my life. This is the Black Nostradamus sitting here with the Kingdom Strategies, my wife. Glory to God. She gives her love. This is your apostles, your prophets, your pastors, your generals, General Andrew. And my wife, you know, I love you guys. Remember, you're challenged to become a challenger. Stop thinking with that stinking thinking and thinking with that wimpy thinking and start thinking like bosses. Start thinking like uh, a, a Goliath destroyer. Start thinking like a champion. Start thinking like the greatest challenger in the world. Because you are. You can do it. You can move past your current state that you are in. I love you. I wanted to encourage you today. Please share this, you guys. Share this content to encourage somebody. I'll talk to you later. Peace.